this treasure in jars of clay to show that this unsurpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not destroyed. It after me 2023 is my year of living by the world. The world will work for me. The word I obey will answer for me. I am healthy by the word. I overcome by the word. With my mouth, I proclaim the word of faith. It is well with me. I boldly declare thy word, O oh Lord. I have hidden in my heart. I will not sin against thee. The loudest amen. Everybody around you discourages you, even your family members see nothing good in you. They saw nothing good in Jesus. What good can come out of Nazareth? But I'm telling you, the best came out of Nazareth. The best is coming out of you. Get encouraged in the world. Be nourished by the world. Be nourished by the world. Be nourished by the word. The word of God is God's fountain of water that quench every thirst. This week, your thirst shall be quenched. You know, Pharaoh in Egypt was seen as a god. So they thought nobody can unseat him. God controls history. And he overrules all things to his glory. In your life, God will overrule. So don't let anybody intimidate you. Don't let any report, medical report, intimidate you. God is sovereign. Only believe the report of the Lord. This week, your worship will rise. Rise to the heavens and the blessing will come down and you will return with Lord. This week, your worship will rise. your holy name for this privilege to be here. We thank you. There's none like you. And there's none that will forever be like you. Blessed be your holy name. Can we rise up? And I appreciate God and thank you. It's another day in his presence. It's another day in his presence. We bless you. 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 We give you praise. We appreciate you. We give you praise. We appreciate you. And we lift up our voice and appreciate him once again for sparing our lives, for bringing us here safely, for being part of this service, whether physically or online. We thank you. We worship you. Blessed be your holy name. Hallowed 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 be your holy name. We thank you that in the midst of difficulties you've kept us alive. You kept us forging ahead. You kept us moving. You, you, you keep making us to make progress. We don't want to take that for granted. We appreciate you. We thank you. We thank you for what you're doing in the church. We 
thank you for your work, for your word, for your miracles. Even when we have not spoken anything, we thank you. Thank you. Even when it seems that there's no direction, or because we are involved, you give us a form and structure, you give us direction. We bless you. Bless them in your holy name. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you as a church for your for for your for your hand upon us, for your hand upon our members. Upon our people, men and women and children, young people, we give you praise. We thank you that in the midst of all this, your name will be exalted. Your name will be praised. Men will be drawn to you. We give you praise. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name. Can we sing some worship? Worship five minutes. Help me with the worship song. Five minutes. Let's appreciate him. Let's thank him. It's good to enter into his cause with praises. Worship. As we offer all to Thee, the sacrifice, seas of thanksgiving. As we offer all to Thee, the sacrifice. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise. We bring the sacrifice of praise right here into the house, the house of the Lord.
our Father, Isaiah 60 verse 1. Can you help me with that scripture? I don't know why the screen is not on. I don't know why the screen is not on. Arise, shine, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Can we personalize this and read the scripture? And loud and clear, arise, shine, uh, shine for my light has is come, come, and the and glory, the glory the Lord of the Lord is risen, is risen upon, me. upon me. Can we take it again and personalize it? I arise, shine, shine for my, my light, light is come, is come and, the and the glory of the Lord, Lord is risen upon, upon me. me. Alright, uh, let's take it again. I arise, arise, I arise, I shine, shine for, for my, my light, light is, is come, come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. I just want to pray a few, few prayer points around experiencing His glory. Experiencing His glory. You can't remain the same when the glory of the Lord appears upon you. When the glory of the Lord is on you or is up, upon you or is with you, you can't remain the same. Scripture, so keep that scripture for me, please. Arise. It's a command. Shine. For my light is come. Uh, I will translate for my light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Shining is a function of God's glory upon your life. Shining is a function of God's glory upon your life and it's only possible when light is possible, is there. Alright? Light appears, darkness disappears. Enter and light appears, darkness disappears. Let's pray upon our lives this day, upon the church this day, upon our members, that in our lives we experience His glory, we will experience any BC Abuja, we experience His glory. And everyone connected to any BC Abuja, we experience God's glory on a daily basis, on a daily basis, as long as you remain connected with Him, your glory will be manifest. Your shining is guaranteed. Your shining is guaranteed because light will stay on you. When light stays on you, it exposes you for favor. Not that. It exposes you for location. It exposes you for being seen. If you have been covered before or you are at the back, when the light is beaming on you, everybody sees you. That's the glory of the living God. When you are experience the glory. You experience release. You experience favor. You experience location. You experience being beamed. If you are being behind, you'll be in front. I'm literally trying to break down that scripture so that when you are praying, we pray understanding. And if you are going to experience that glory, you have to arise. Arise, shine. For the light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Let's pray that the glory of the Lord will rise on USA Baptist Church. Open your mouth and pray. As you pray for the church, God is also sorting your own out. Let's pray. With the, give it a voice. Give it a voice. Lord, let your glory arise on USA Baptist Church Abuja. Let your glory arise on New Year's Baptist Church Abuja. Let your glory arise on New Year's Baptist Church Abuja. Let your glory stay on New Year's Baptist Church Abuja. Let your glory be upon New Year's Baptist Church Abuja in the name of Jesus. In your presence. Your glory brings your presence. Let your glory, O oh God, let your glory, O oh God, arise on New Year's Baptist Church Abuja. We pray, we lift up our voice and cry unto you, O Lord, our Father, our Father, the maker of heaven and earth, the one who knows the end from the beginning, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Let your glory arise upon New Year's Baptist Church Abuja in our meetings, in our houses, in our locations. Let this glory permit around everyone, everyone connected to us. Let your glory arise. Let your glory arise. Let your glory arise. Let your glory arise. 
Let your glory arise. Give it voice, give it voice. Let your glory arise. As we are praying for the church, God is sorting us out. Let your glory arise. Fully upon the church. Let your praises arise and rest upon us. Let your glory 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 permeate everywhere in the church. Every life of the leaders, the pastors, the leaders, the deacons, the workers, the members, wherever they are. Whether you are here physically or, or, or watching us virtually, or what if you are not even participating in the service at all, let your glory locate, locate, on, locate everyone. Let your glory arise. And when they see us, they see your glory. When they see us, they see your presence. Your presence will give us protection. Your presence will do innumerable things for, for us. Father, we understand the, 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 the innumerable benefits of your presence upon our lives. You said you'll be with us. You said you'll be with me. Even to my old age, you will be with me. That is the, one of the innumerable blessings of your blessings. We won't get confused. We won't lack direction. We, will, we, we, we won't be in a situation where we don't know what to do. Let your glory arise. Let your glory arise upon New Estate Baptist Church Abuja and the affiliations to us. Our daughter churches, our, our, our preaching stations. Lord, let your glory arise. Arise upon your church. Lord, arise. Lord, arise. Let your glory shine upon us. Let your glory shine upon us. In the name of Jesus. Now, one thing that the glory does is it, dispel, it causes light to shine and disperse every form of darkness. Lord, every form of darkness operating in our midst at the appearance of your glory, let them disappear in the name of Jesus. I don't care to know the shade or form is operating. Let every darkness operate in the life of the church, operate in the life of our members, sir, operate in the life of God's people, let them disappear at the appearance of your light. Let them disappear. Let them disappear. Every form of darkness. Every form of darkness. Every form of darkness. Darkness can't stand light. If darkness is operating in your life, it means there's not enough evidence of light in your life. Today, 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 we generate enough light to dispel every form of darkness in our church. In the name of Jesus. In every way, it's trying to thwart the glory of God, thwart the light from shining in our lives, Frustrate it by your power in the name of Jesus. We frustrate every walk of darkness in this church. Every walk of darkness against the leaders. Every walk of darkness against the pastors. From not fulfilling God's mandate. From not being able to declare God's word as it is and should be. From not being able to release God's word to the people. Today we this of darkness in the life of the church. In the life of the leaders. In the life of the deacons. In the name of Jesus, in the life of the HODs and the departmental unit leaders, in the life of workers in the church, in the life of our members, every walk of darkness, we dispel it, we destroy it, we arrest it totally. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, every oppression of darkness in the life of the people, frustrating your mandate from not happening in their life, today we destroy them. In the name of Jesus. Every walk of darkness assuming different form and stature, different style and pattern that goes in seasons. Today we destroy them in our lives in the name of Jesus. Every walk of darkness, open your mouth and pray. Every walk of darkness operating in our lives, in the life of our members, frustrating them for not experiencing the joy of God, the joy of salvation. The full potential of God's word. For stretching the word of God upon their life. Today we destroy them. In the name of Jesus. Darkness cannot stand the light of God. Father we ask today. Let your light appear in the midst of your people. Let your light appear in the midst of your people. Let your light appear in the midst of the people. In the name of Jesus. Nothing can frustrate us. From not experiencing your glory. Now and continuously. In the life of the church. In the life of our members, in the name, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, 
in the name of Jesus. Father, we lift up our voices as, as a church to pray. We decree, we set your people free. Let every appearance of darkness, every shade of darkness, every lock of darkness operating in our lives, let that be destroyed. Let that be destroyed. Let that be destroyed. Let that be destroyed. Give your people your encounter. Make your people encounter you as they sleep tonight going forward. Let them begin to encounter you. Let them begin to hear definite instructions on what to do, on what to do, on what to do, on how to go about it. In the name of Jesus, every mandate of darkness, not allowing your light to manifest fully in the life of your people. Today we destroy them in the name of Jesus. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Arise, shine, for my light has come. I want to lift up your voice and pray. Lord, today, I begin to express your glory going forward. I begin to express your glory going forward. I begin to express your glory going forward. I begin to experience your glory going forward. Today, today, whatever it is that has limited this glory from not being fully manifest in my life, in ministry, in my career, in my business, in my workplace, in the marketplace where I belong to, wherever it is my profession is, I don't care to know the profession. Lord, let your light fully manifest in my life. In the name of Jesus, every kept every embargo that are laid upon your career and business and life, let that be lifted up now. In the name of Jesus, everything covering me, everything covering me from not being seen, from not being seen today, I receive great to be located. Seen, seen, whatever is in the light is seen, whatever is in the light is seen. Today I receive grace to be seen, grace to be located in the name of Jesus. Where my business is not seen, today I receive light for them to be seen. Where my talent and abilities and innate abilities are not seen, today I receive grace to be seen and discovered in the name of Jesus. Let your light manifest in the life of the church. Let your light manifest in every aspect of the church in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you praise, sir. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. Let your light shine, Lord. 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 In the name of Jesus. Let your light shine, Lord. I walk in the light, in the light of your word. I walk in the light of your word. I walk in the light of your word. I walk in the light of your word. In this year, as I live by the word, I will experience your glory. As we live by God's word this year, we will experience his glory. Full term, full blown, not half blown, not quarter blown. As we live by God's word this year, we experience his light, full blown upon our lives. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Lift up your voice and say something nice to the Lord. And I appreciate him. I want you before I round up, ask something for the Lord today. It's an evidence that you have come here. And talk to the Lord. I'll give you two, three minutes to do that before I hand over. Lord, for coming here, I have a reason. Even if I don't have a reason, I remember something. Lord, do it for me. Lord, do it for me. It may be a career you want God to push forward. It may be a child you want God to favor. It may be your business you want God to touch. It may be your ministry gift you want God to uplift or upscale. It, it may be your spouse you want God to effect and touch. It may be anything. It may be your sibling, your sister, your mother, anybody. Lord, it may be yourself. You have been looking up to God for something. You have been trusting for something. God is able to do what he says he will do. If you are holding him by a word, place a demand on him. 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 Zwanatani malakata sakatani. Zoli Pratu Kelede, Zoni Tali Maratu Kele, Zwanatani Malato Secretia, Zwanatani Mele Bolode, Zik Laku Tu Legade, Lika Paratu Legade, Zwanatani Maleta Labat, Zeli Puroko Tokotokoto. Maybe I'm not even sure of your next meal. The Lord will visit you in the name of Jesus. Yakata Sakatani, Mle Prata Labada, 
Zwanata Labada. Maybe you are still stranded and tired and asking God, when will this be? To the Lord, the Lord will visit you. Arise, shine, for your light has come. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Give him praise and appreciate him. Jesus, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. That scripture says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. I join faith with the servant of God tonight to declare, in the name of Jesus, you are a star. That amen is not looking like you are a star. You are a star. You are a star. The Bible says, The light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. Scripture says, Light is sweet. It's a pleasant thing for the eyes to behold the sun. Ecclesiastes 11, verse 7. In the name of Jesus, you will shine in the name of Jesus. Herod and his army could not stop Jesus from shining. You will shine. They said, We beheld a star in the east, and we have come to worship. Nothing could stop the star from shining. Nothing could stop Israel from arising and becoming the nation that God wanted them to be. And today we declare in the name of Jesus, from this meeting, someone will arise and shine. Whatever that has been dulling your light and nulling your light tonight, we declare, they come to end in the name of Jesus. Thank God for hearing us tonight. Congratulate someone for coming to this meeting tonight. Tell him or her you are welcome. You are a star. You are a star. You are a star. You make news everywhere. You shine so bright and no darkness can stop you from shining. In the name of Jesus. Come on, give Jesus a shout of praise. Please be seated. God bless you. Please be seated. Those of us at the back, can you just move forward, move forward, move forward, move forward, move forward so that we can. Yes, thank you. God bless you, choir. You speak from heaven. We call it wonder. You are amazing. You smile from heaven. We call it rainbow. You are amazing. Oh, oh. and you look from heaven. We call it sunshine. That's amazing. And In your likeness, it's super amazing.
of my spirit open up right here tonight i am with the father open up let there be no boundaries and no limit no boundaries no limit open up let deep call on to the Spirit is here tonight. No boundaries, no limit. Open up. Let him call on to deep. Let him call on to deep. the Lord tonight this is one of the reasons why we are gathered we come again for more Paul said I keep on pressing I keep pressing towards the mark I keep pressing every time we gather like this because God is about to show you something that you probably do not know before can you talk to the Lord tonight set my heart on fire set my life in order simplicity of our hearts 
Lord, we ask that you will grant us entrance into your word. In the name of Jesus. And by the entrance of your word, Lord, let there be light. That we might shine forth your glory to the world. In the name of Jesus. Lord, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be that which is acceptable in your sight. In the name of Jesus. Grant me entrance an open door of faith unto your people in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. We have been in an, on an interesting journey this year and um, we have started on what the theologians would call Old Testament survey. All right? And um, at this point, we are at the book of Joshua. So my assignment tonight is to take us to a survey of the book of Joshua. And I trust that the Holy Spirit will help me. But more importantly, I will be focusing on an aspect that borders on our Christian lives as we look at the book of Joshua and also the if time permits we will look at the aspect that borders on the church life and the expectation of God for his church as is being told from the study of Joshua or from the history book of Joshua I want to quickly draw our attention to the fact that the entire scripture is the story of the love of God to humanity and the advent of God in rescuing the entire humanity, demonstrating his love by redeeming man into his purpose. That's the story of the scripture. Do we agree with me? Now, that's basically the story. So when we look at history books, it is important for us to look at it from the perspective of what story, what part of the story of God's love is this scripture talking about? Because when you look at the architecture of the histories or the history books in the, in the, in the, in the, in the Bible, if you take, pay close attention to it, you will realize that God is showcasing you know, what should be or what are the likely things that we evolve in the life of a believer. So it's the story of a believer we are looking at. The possibilities of the workings of God. And sometimes it also demonstrates to us the frailty of human being. And how God continually and committedly worked out the redemption of, of, of his purpose in the life of men. That's the story. If we read the history books of the Bible from that perspective, then we begin to gain understanding especially at evaluating the expectation of Christian life and probably sometimes also to safeguard us in our own journey in Christian faith. Are we together? So these things, the scriptures says, are written for our example. I, I hope you remember that scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 that says that the Bibles, the stories of the scripture are written for our example, especially those of us that, you know, the end of age has caught up with. So from there, so when you look at the histories or the books of histories in the Bible, you can, you can have a clue to the expectations of God and to the possibilities of your work with God and things to avoid. Examples to copy. Are we together? And a pattern to follow as you look at the storybooks of the Bible. So they are not just for entertainment. They are not just for, uh, for to update our knowledge of the Bible and the histories of the past. They are actually painting for us on the canvas of history, you know, the life of a believer or the possibilities of the challenges that a believer might 
encounter as a journey in, in his Christian faith. So tonight, my emphasis, even though I'm going to show us briefly the, the arrangement, building on what Pastor has shared with us, of this book, but more importantly is that I'm interested in beaming light to help us see from the book of Joshua the possibilities of victorious Christian life. The book of Joshua is, most theologians regard it as a book of conquest. All right? If you look at the book of Joshua, God has promised you know, the, the people of Israel that he's going to give them a land. All right? Among every other promise, he promised them, you know, Canaan land as their inheritance. And this promise is as far back as Genesis. You know, when God was calling Abraham out of the region of Canaan, all right? Genesis chapter 12. And God gave them specific promise. And in fact, by the time we are coming to the end of Genesis in chapter 50, God particularly emphasized his commitment to fulfilling the promise to, he has made to Abraham. Now, when you now compare side by side Genesis and divine promises of God with Joshua, and you now look at the epilogue of Joshua in chapter 24, you will see that God brought into fulfillment his promise unto Abraham to give him Canaan land. And beyond that, is that we see a reflection of a victorious Christian life from the book of Joshua. So the book of Joshua, when you look up, maybe we start from the fact that it's named after the man Joshua himself, all right? And the name Joshua, of course, that was not his original name. If you go back to uh, the book of Numbers, uh, probably uh, Numbers 13, Numbers 8, you know that Joshua was originally by that name, Osea, all right, which actually means salvation. But as he entered into his calling under the uh, supervision or leadership of Moses, it came into a point of transformation by, you know, aligning himself with the divine calling, such that it became necessary for a new nomenclature. To be granted unto him. And now this nomenclature now is a is a he, he entered into a fellowship that brought him to become an example, a type of Jesus Christ. Are we together? Are we together? So sometimes we can also take a clue from that truth that as we begin to align ourselves to divine purposes. Now there is a reason why God brought us to church. By the time we begin to embrace the full curriculum of God's purpose for bringing us to the fellowship or to the, to, to, to the assemblies of the believer, we begin to realize that God will begin to transform and ensure that the original intention of our creation is fulfilled. So it's important for us to take a cue of alignment from that example. As Joshua submitted himself to the leadership and tutelage of Moses, God brought him into a status in the realm of the spirit that made him to become a type. You know, in, in theology, we talk about typology. All right? Melchizedek, for instance, the typology of Jesus Christ. Joshua also entered into that quorum of people that could rise to a status where God can take them as an example of his intention. Beloved, if we cooperate with God and we embrace the full curriculum of his dealings in our lives, we, will become, we are not just going to live this side of existence like that. We will become a transgenerational example. There are people in this city today that we refer to them. There is no way you will talk about the history of the church, for instance. You won't mention someone, someone like St. Austin. All right? And he, 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 if you read his story, you will know that he has a very rough story. In fact, st story of immorality. All right? But as he began to embrace the call of God over his life, there is a divine alignment. 
that made him someone that when we are talking about the history of the church today, you will mention him. And I hope you know St. Austin is from Africa. Amen? Amen. Amen. So it's important for us to take a cue from that and began or begin to embrace the full curriculum of God for our lives. Discipleship programs are going on in the church today. And you will be shocked that we still have members that have not gone through any discipleship program in this church. You'll be shocked. And I wish we could do that evaluation and find out. Amen. All these things are not just for fame. God is designing a procedure to bring us into the full stature of his calling for our life. Amen. So, the purpose of the book of Joshua, of course, I'm sure maybe after this um, ministration, the slide will be made available to every member of the church so we can read through. Say, all right. So, I will just jump that part because there, are, there, there is an emphasis of the spirit that I believe God wants us to focus our attention on today. So quickly, let me just look at the outline. Just, you can move to the outline of the book of um, Joshua. Basically, there are three key issues or three key areas of focus in the book of um, Joshua that Pastor shared with us. We saw a part of the book from chapter 1 to chapter 5 talking about the entering into the land. How did they enter into the land? And in a short while, I will begin to portray to us the significance of that to our Christian living. There are significant events in the entering of the people of Israel into the land of, of, of Canaan that is important for us to pay attention to as we picture the journey of a victorious Christian life. And then we'll be able to properly situate ourselves in the program and the agenda of God as we look at those truths. So we have the conquering of the land from chapter 6 through chapter 12. Many wars, many battles happened. And I trust that I will have sufficient time to also portray for, for us significant events from the conquest that we can, you know, we can compare notes with as we examine a, Christ, a, a victorious Christian life. Of course, probably if time permits, we will also be able to look at the template of the conquest and be able to situate it in God's strategy for the church in the end time. Amen. I, I hope time will permit us to be able to look at that. And the last portion, well, not necessarily the last, of course, the major portion from chapters 13 to 22 talks about how the land was allotted to various members of the people of Israel. And also, if time permit me, I'm going to portray and show us the implication for today's believer, the allotments of the land all right so and then the last two chapters are the epilogue of joshua a parting message from joshua time cannot permit us to you know do an exegesis around that all right so um the next slide just gave us a dashboard of the book of joshua and i want us to pay attention you can see that from this table, the book of Joshua is divided into two broad parts. The taking of the land and then the moving into the land. Under the taking of the land, we see the preparation to take the land. And we are, which we are going to consider in a little more detail as a significance of our Christian living. And then we look at the conquest of the land under the taking of the land. And then under the moving into the land, we see how the land was distributed the allocation of the land and then it is not sufficient for land to be distributed it's important that it's possessed a lot of us christian believer we do not understand the full import of spiritual warfare 
We just want to get out of the trouble. But when you get out of the trouble, what, what next? You should move into your worthy place. Amen? It is not sufficient for you to recover from an ailment. Beloved, the reason why God granted us faith and the possibility of divine miracles is not just for us to just be the partaker of that miracle. But do you know that every miracle you have received, there is a seed of that miracle in you to replicate the same miracle? Are we together? You have not fully possessed. If all you enjoy is good earth and you have not exercised the healing grace of God that comes through that good earth that you are enjoying. Are we together? Are we together? So for every deliverance, it's also a seed of a deliverer. There is an anointing to be able to execute deliverance onto your generation by the same deliverance that you have received. So you understand when Paul said, so that we may be able to comfort you with the same comfort that we have received. The reason why God is comforting us is not just for us to benefit of that comfort, but that we may become the distributor of the same comfort that we have received. Hallelujah. So we, you, you can only take a full possession of the purposes of God when you yourself begin to enact the same dimensions of grace that you have enjoyed. Amen. I need to say that because I'm not sure whether time will permit me to buttress on that truth as we go on. So uh, let's look at the uh, implication of the entering of the land to our Christian living today. Because otherwise, the story of jo Joshua will just be a story. All right? Maybe for entertainment or for increase in information and knowledge. But it has connotation for our victorious Christian living. Amen. So when you look at Joshua, time cannot permit me to look at chapter 1. We can do that because there are strong leadership lessons, especially for those of us that have one leadership responsibility or the other. There are strong leadership lessons for us from that. But let me just focus on the one that pertains to our personal and individual Christian living. So in the book of Job and chapter 5, if you read from verse 1 to verse 9, it told us a story of a significant event. It talks about circumcision of the people of Israel. All right? And from verse 10 through verse, um, I believe, 12, he also talked about a very important feast among the Jewish believers, okay? The feast of Passover. So immediately after circumcision, they performed the feast of Passover. These two significant effects are critical to the covenant of Abraham. Because you can only partake of the blessings of Abraham to the extent to which you are conformed to the covenant of Abraham. Are we together? So it becomes very important. One of the things that they did when they were leaving Egypt is that <laughs> there were some people, interest group, that said, Kai, we have seen some dangerous and wonderful work among these people. Let's join them. The scripture called them the mixed multitude. The entrance point for the mixed multitude into the assembly of the Israelites is that of the necessity they must conform to the covenant of Abraham. So of the necessity for you to become a full partaker of that assembly, you must go through circumcision. All right? And you recall in Genesis chapter 17 and all of that when God enacted or it become a, a circumcision become a token of the covenant. The proof that you have entered into covenant with God is circumcision. And uh, the Bible is also, in the New Testament, 
Paul helped us to understand the import of circumcision. So, though the circumcision then was physical because the, the things in the Old Testament are the shadow of things to come. Are we together? So, when the reality came by, you know, the coming of Jesus Christ, the circumcision now become a spiritual encounter, a spiritual experience. All right? So, in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 11, among every other scripture that talked about circumcision, I think this is of a very, very particular interest. He said, In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hand. A spiritual circumcision. In putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Mm. Now today we are being engrossed with a wishy washy Christian life. We are little emphasis is laid on the issue of sin and holiness. Now we we have overburdened the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And turn it to an opportunity for lavishness. That is why it's very possible for a pastor to get involved in immorality. And uh, we'll be confident to even talk about it on the pulpit as if nothing has happened. Circumcision, they are not circumcised. So the first encounter that the only, as we go in our journey into maturity, is that the Lord will be definite in dealing with the body of sin. Don't forget, the eye of the Lord cannot behold iniquity. And the Lord deals with sin decisively, definitely, and intentionally. If, if, if the scriptures say, it will not be well with them that cover us up their sin. Beloved, it is also important to emphasize, maybe at the infancy of your Christian life, there are a possibility of besetting sin that the scripture talked about. But we must move on to maturity. The scripture is very clear and definite. First John, 3 and verse 9. He who is born of God, do not sin. Eh? For his seed, the seed of God, remaineth in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. If any Christian believer is still struggling with sin, he, he, he needs to come to the place of circumcision. There is no two way about it. You need to be willing to confront this issue that you, you have labored weakness and allow God to help you deal with it. Come to the altar of mercy so that we can find grace and obtain mercy that is able to help us in time of need. We cannot be gallivanting in, in sin and we expect grace to continue. Paul says, God forbid. What grace is that? The grace that condones sin. So the scripture says in Titus chapter 2 and verse 11, the grace of God has appeared unto all men. All right? The grace of God that brings their salvation has appeared unto all men. Verse 12. So teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly loss, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly 
in this present world, this world that is laced with temptation, this world that is perverse and corrupt, God is still looking for believers that will, that will have surrendered well enough to the circumcision experience. Beloved, let me tell us, we cannot inherit the promise until we have gone through circumcision. We are not qualified. So, so what, what, what we are enjoying, if we are still living in sin, and we think everything is okay, what we are enjoying is the due of mercy. It is not the promise. I hope you know that, now, one of the critical things that we notice in this entering experience in verse 12 is that from the day they subjected themselves to circumcision and to the, let me quickly mention, Passover is a typical re representation of the work of Christ on the cross. Are we together? The cross. He said, he said they should make a symbol on the top or on the lintel of their house. And if you notice, I don't know how many of us have paid attention to that description of the, in Exodus. He said, that blood, they should rub it from bottom to top and from one side to the other side. What does that look like? The cross. The emblem of our redemption. The cross. Jesus Christ said emphatically in Luke 9 that he who so ever want to follow me must do what? Must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. There, there is a cross. There is a cross. You know, there, there are certain things that this evening I wanted to say once I mourn the pulpit. But the cross will not permit me to say them. The cross. You, you must bear this thing daily. There is no victorious Christian life if there is no cross and circumcision. Or on a daily basis. The other time somebody came to me and wanted me to pray. And I whispered something to another person. And when I started praying, nothing was happening. I was seeing what God wanted to do. But the angel of the Lord that was assigned to carry that assignment just stood, was just watching me. I saw the angel. I knew what exactly the angel came to do. But, and I understood well enough that all I need to do as a representation of God is to make a pronouncement. And that will become a permission for that operation to take place. I made the pronouncement, nothing happened. Nothing. Until when I got to the house fellowship, <laughs> we were discussing about something that is not even directly related to that. And the Holy Spirit, I see somebody sat beside me and whispered to me that, hey, now I think I have your attention now. Will I say, this house fellowship has calmed you back down. You can listen to me now. You know, you messed up. I said, really? Yes. Why did you have to make that pronouncement you made? Uh, you, you are living in the flesh, oh. And with that, you have denied somebody what God wants. But God, he said, God loves you. He wants to preserve you. So he wouldn't mind that person not receiving that gift down at that moment because after all, the person will still receive it. But you, you need to learn your lesson now. You need to be subjected to the cross. This thing that you just exhibited, it now begins to chronicle for me. This has made a lot of men of God irrelevant. They are still there, but as far as heaven is concerned, they are no longer in God's record. And God showed me Matthew 7 and verse 21. I, I, I feared. In your name we did this, we did that. I looked at them and said, depart from me. You are workers of iniquity. Now, just to emphasize the fact that for us to enter into our inheritance, the cross and circumcision, mutilation of the flesh, 
in traffic, somebody will drive rough and you will feel like giving it back until you remember circumcision. <laughs> and sometimes you will have even water the wall and go, the Holy Spirit says, see, I caught you. <laughs> Your tongue. Isaiah 6, woe unto me, I'm a man of unclean lips. And he has been delivering wonderful sermons to the nations, to the people of God from chapter 1 to chapter 5. But an encounter with God, with the cross, revealed to him where the problem lies. The thing that is stopping him, do you notice that from after chapter 6, Isaiah became a global prophet, speaking to nations, speaking to nations. God now said, okay, now, you have spoken to nations, you've done well. Now, let me move you into what I'm actually taking you into. And he began to prophesy about the time of the end. Spoke about Jesus Christ. You remember Isaiah 66 talking about what will happen at the time of the end. Why? Because the thing that is limiting him from entering into that inheritance, it was authentic enough to surrender at the encounter with God and say, Lord, woe unto me. The, the correct description is that I'm done with. I'm a man of unclean lips. So the cross and circumcision are the entry point into our divine inheritance. Can, I, can, can we make a progress into the story of the conquest? So, from Joshua chapter 6, if time permits us, we talk about the strategy for the church. So that will make us to come back to chapter 5, the last two verses of chapter 5, and move us into chapter 6. If if the time permits that. But let's quickly look at some critical, you know, incidents from the conquest that have some implications for our spiritual and victorious Christian life. Number one, uh, in chapter 6 and verse 1 downward, it talks about the conquest of Jericho. That's the entry point to the journey of it. Are you with me? Are you with me? Because the, the story of the conquest is a demonstration of trials of faith. Because what God began to ask them to do to a human being will not make sense. All right? And you know, our God is wonderful. He now added an instruction to it. When, say, when you are encompassing for the first six days, you are not permitted to utter a word. Are we together? Did, did we notice that? And have we thought about what's the implication of that? Why is God saying that they shouldn't utter a word? See, faith life is word based. All right? And when, for instance, in, in the book of Luke, chapter 1, when God noticed that the unbelieving Zachariah was going to cancel out the purposes of God, he made him to become mute. All right? So that the purposes of God will not be trun truncated by the entrance. Now, when you, when you understand different ramific ramifications of faith, uh, you know, we have the word of faith. Faith comes by what? By hearing and hearing the word of God. So, the word of faith comes by the word of God. It's not just a declaration of your wishes. It must be the word of God. And it must have entered into your heart so well. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom until he's able to produce faith. Alright? So, when the word of God dominates our heart so well, it will evolve and produce the spirit of faith. You remember that scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13 that talks about the spirit of faith. You cannot make a pronouncement of faith until the word of faith has so much been loaded into your heart to produce the spirit of faith. It is when you make an entrance by the spirit of faith. Tell we, having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore we speak. 
And the reason why most of the time we come to the place of prayer and we make pronouncement and nothing happens is because it, they are empty. They are not coming from the spirit of faith. Jesus Christ said, the word that I speak unto you, they are spirits and their life. So as you begin to load your heart with God's word, it will produce faith. The spirit of faith will revive in our soul and it will lead us to making pronouncement that is guarded by the Messiah of faith. And that is when we can get results. So God gave them prescription. So God began to architecture for us. How a man, the just, how the just will live by faith. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7, Paul wrote, We walk not by sight, but by faith. There is something that is powering our life. It goes beyond the estimation of human calculation and knowledge. It is called faith. Faith. So we see a, a, a type of demonstration of a walk by faith. So then in, in chapter 7, we saw the story of Hai. You remember Hai? A very small city that ordinarily should be a walkover, like everybody will imagine. But unfortunately, the people of Israel were defeated. So in the journey of faith, there are possibility of presumption, which we must be careful of. You know, the scripture says, let him that stand it should take it, less he fall. You know, you know, we get to a stage in our Christian work that knowledge will begin to pop off. And you begin to assume you become, you become a supervisory agent to the work of the Holy Spirit. And uh, without knowing it, we are popping off. We assume that we know. Amen. And especially for some of us that have poopy ministry. Pastor, we are trained by so any text you give us, we can do SGS. We know all the techniques around SGS. And you can come presumptuously to the pulpit in that manner. And you will miss the mark. By the time you get out of the pulpit, the Holy Spirit will tell you your score. And say, oh boy, you missed the mark today. <laughs> that is not the emphasis of the Spirit. So presumptuousness is a very dangerous thing in our walk with God. It must be a perpetual dependence on the Holy Ghost. We, cannot, we can never, at this side of existence, get to a point where we will no longer need the Holy Spirit. So, we saw that in the uh, defeats of I. And Another thing we observe there is the danger of secret sin. Number one, the Israelites make a presumption. Number two, somebody... You see, the communal life, that's the challenge of the communal life. Our strongest point is the weakest point among us. Are we together? That's why it's important. I love our prayer people. That's why they don't make assumptions when they come to come and lead us in prayer. We always ask for forgiveness and mercy because we don't know it didn't sin. He will cover it his sin. The scripture says he will not prosper. There, there are no two ways about it. God is decisive about it. So sometimes it's important for us to do a check. When we are meeting with defeat constantly, let us evaluate, at least eliminate that there is no secrecy. All right. So, also in that story, we saw the, the mercy of God. When we open up, He will redeem us. God is so loving, and there are provision for us to get out of presumptuousness and get out of secrecy. And the solution, the prescription is that 
perhaps you say first john chapter 2 and verse 1 i write these things to you little children that you might not sin peradventure you see eh, be humble enough to quickly return to him and if any man say we have an advocate with the father jesus the righteous one so let, let him be humble enough to go in repentance it does not matter what status we have in church and among the brethren we should be humble enough to ask for repentance in chapter 9 we saw the story of gibeon so in journey of faith you, you remember the story I, I believe we have read the story there are this group of people that came the Evertites that came and deceived the people of Israel into making an alliance of peace with them all right in our journey of faith our discernment will be put to test all right so constantly and perpetually we must grow in spiritual sensitivity and accuracy so that we won't enter into deception so there is possibility that even the saints the elect might be deceived matthew 24 and verse 12 or verse i can't remember the verse now <laughs> you know he said iniquity will was good but i think the previous verse talked about the fact that even that he let might be deceived okay so the elect also have the tendency of being deceived so we must perpetually sharpen our antenna and ensure that we maintain high level of spiritual sensitivity and accuracy in the realm of the spirit okay so in chapter 10 we saw a very significant story of uh, the sun standing still do you remember that that story all right so there is no limit to what is possible in god with god nothing is impossible but, but most of the time when we talk about the story of the sun standing still we we do not read into the depth of that con context now, now let, let's just read oh uh my time is when am i stopping sir five minutes okay so let's just look at that story um chapter 10 when joshua make a decree that the sun should stand still If you find it, you can help me. Uh, all right. Have we found it? Please, if you have found. Okay. Then, now, I, I want us to read very carefully, verse 12. Then spake Joshua to who? To the Lord. All right and now let's look at the second time he now spoke and he said in the sight of israel son stands thou still upon gibeon you know the first speaking is who is with who with the lord if you don't have a secret communion with the Lord, you can't stand before men to command impossibility. I hope we get that truth. Until we have a strong standing with the Lord, we don't have the authority to stand before men to make a decree. That is the order. You want to see the impossibility? It's possible. But we must learn that it is in our work with God that we'll be able to command uh, the impossibility. With God, nothing shall be impossible. With God, with God, only with God is there possibility, endless possibility. And then in chapter 11, we see how God, you know, there was the confederation of about, I think, four kings. They came together. And then 
God, you know, brought a sudden surprise to the enemy and delivered the people of Israel. And what we notice, a very critical lessons from that is when you war with God, we have access to superior and spiritual intelligence. Are we together? In our war with God, we have access to superior and supernatural intelligence that can deliver unto us perpetually the victory. So we must maintain that understanding as we walk with God. And it's my prayer that as we begin to soak in these lessons from the book of Joshua, the Lord will enrich our life mightily to live a, Christo a, a victorious Christian life in the name of Jesus. Now, time cannot permit me to look at the division, but maybe I can just mention that when you look at the way the, the allotment of the land was done, and you now place that side by side with 1 Corinthians chapter 12, you understand the distribution of divine giftings in the church. And how by that distribution, every Christian believer is relevant to the body of Christ. Are we together? And as we walk in unity, you know, when you look at that distribution, you know, I hope you know that 1 Corinthians chapter 12 talked about three, three things. Number one, it talks about the ministry gifts. No, it talks about the spiritual gifts. Then it talks about ministry services, the operation of God to the body. And that's when he begins to talk about that some are here, some are highs, some are hands, and all of that. And all of us in unity will work together as the body of Christ. So there is a role that New Estate Baptist Church is playing in the body of Christ. And it's important for all you to understand the role that you are also playing in the body of New Estate Baptist Church as a member of the body of Christ. So that as you do that effectively, you can contribute to what God is doing among us. Amen. And the last part talk about the ministry gift, those who are called into specific offices. So you see the allotment. And particular of particular interest is verse 7 of 1 Corinthians 12 that says that the manifestation of the spirit is given unto how many? Unto all. And mark you for the profit of everyone. To profit with that. Alright? So it's important that there is a divine allocation for you. And you need to press into your allocation so that the body can benefit of what God is doing. Of course, time cannot permit me to talk about divine strategy for the conquest of the end time church. And I believe if, time, if we have the opportunity some other time, we can look at that as we, as the member of the body of Christ, prepare for the end time engagement in this side of existence. And I pray that the Lord will mightily by himself make us victorious on every side in the name of Jesus. If there be anyone in one aspect of your life or the other, you are experiencing defeat by the understanding of this truth, I declare and decree you receive grace for conquest. In the name of Jesus, from today onward, we declare and decree no more feebleness among us in the name of Jesus. He said, those that are at least among us will be as strong as David and the house of David like the, the, like the angel of the Lord that goes before them. That scripture, that prophecy is fulfilled concerning this church in the name of Jesus. We declare and decree no more weaklings among us in the name of Jesus. We are strong people. We are victorious people in the name of Jesus. Conquering every moment of our lives and every side of our lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Please, if you want to clap, you can clap to the Lord, please. Thank you. Please stretch your hands and bless him. Pray that God will increase him. Pray that the Lord will anoint him afresh. Pray that the Lord will keep him. He will not fail God in this assignment. In the name of Jesus. Now, one more time, pray for yourself. Say, God, Lord, help me. Search me tonight by this teaching tonight. If there be any uncleanness in me, lead me in the right path in the name of Jesus. We ask you, O God, for your help tonight for every one of us. 
help us to remain steadfast in this faith that when you come will be among those who will behold you at your appearing in the name of Jesus for in Jesus name we have prayed how many of us are happy to be here thank you for coming I'm sure you've been blessed by this wonderful teaching we pray that these words will abide in our hearts in the name of Jesus media please project the um, online um, platforms for our offerings um, praise God the time we are in should not stop us from giving the Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive Isaac sowed in the midst of famine don't stop sowing don't stop giving because there's a miracle locked in there that God doesn't want you to miss please raise your offering unto God or bring out your offering and give unto God as the ushers go around please if you don't have physical cash you can just use any of the online platforms Zenith Bank First Bank God bless you as you do oh POS is available <laughs> thank God <laughs> praise God you don't have any excuse this time <laughs> amen that, that's a nice option sometimes I try this one it doesn't work I use POS and it works so you have all the options God bless you church for this great one amen um, so tomorrow we are going to meet him by 5 30 for our prayer service 5.30, just an hour program. Please be punctual. 5.30 is going to be a time of intense prayer and supplication for our church, for Nigeria, and for individuals. Please don't miss that service, 5.30 p.m. prompt. And by the grace of God, on Sunday, we assemble at 8 a.m. for the prayer service. Um, we have been enjoying God's mercy, um, the prayer service, and of course, the um, mission prayers. And God has been doing glorious things through these prayers so please don't miss that service your service is not complete if you don't attend prayer service and sunday school so if you are in the business of attending only sunday service only the worship service you are missing a lot so god bless you as you comply beginning from this sunday in the name of jesus in the month of april there will be a lot of few burials in um, the month of april starting with um late mrs janet Aluke is scheduled for that's uh, bro Aluke's uh, mother is coming up on April 7th that's Friday April 7th at Edo State um, the burial of Felicia Betel that is Miss Solomon Afwa's mother is scheduled to hold between April 14th and 15th um, is going to hold in Delta State and then we have uh, our brother who God has just used tonight um, the father's burial, father who has gone to be with the Lord, will be buried on April 28, 2023. This will take place in Oyo State. Let's pray that these uh, programs be successful in the name of Jesus. These people died at very old age. We pray that the Lord will cause us to live our days in Jesus' name. None shall be caught in his or her prime. In the name of Jesus, we say no to untimely death in this place. Everyone's life is preserved there to the glory of God in the name of Jesus. Akbar first quarter meeting comes up on March 18th at United Baptist Church, Carmo, Abuja. Please, all the organs should uh, please do the needful, plan and prepare to be in attendance. Um, to the glory of God, by the grace of God, between March 19th and 22nd, we'll be having our revival. Every hand is on deck. We are working hard towards making this program a huge success. Uh, we pray that you invite someone. Please don't come to that program without inviting someone. Uh, if not because we're a very large church. Sometimes when I go to smaller churches, I tell them that if you invite someone, I'm going to give you a gift. I think we tried it on one or two occasions there. So I, God, God will give you the gift <laughs> when you invite someone. So please invite someone. On that day, those dates, March 19 to 22nd, the theme for that program is At Thy Word, O Lord. It's going to be a world worship and um, wonder service. Please don't miss 19th to 20th, 22nd. MME First Quarter Breakfast Meeting hosts Saturday, 25th, March 
2022 at 8 a 2023 at 8 a.m all men are expected to attend saturday 25th march at 8 a.m all men should be punctual nbc teachers conference comes up on saturday same saturday march 25th 2023 all members aspiring to be teachers all teachers sunday school teachers discipleship teachers teenagers uh, teenage teachers or teens teachers which one now is even correct children teachers should please plan to be there and please be punctual god bless you as you plan to attend this event in the name of jesus please i want us to pray for those who are going to be traveling in the month of april for these burial events that the lord will go with them um a brother has gone to represent us at um or your state uh, we are praying that god will bring him back safely in the name of jesus and for all of us who will be traveling any moment from now the lord will also go with us and grant us safety father thank you for these offerings we have given the bible says you love a cheerful giver and you bless he that giveth we ask oh god in the name of jesus bless every hand that has given replenish us in the name of jesus for those who do not have to give we ask oh god let there be let your windows the window of heaven be opened unto them let there be a shower of blessing tonight upon them in jesus name in this difficult time we pray for everyone here will not lack will not be stranded supernatural provisions everywhere in the name of jesus thank you for favor on every side in jesus name we have prayed amen we invite our rabbi to close the meeting thank you sir can you stand and just worship the lord we've been blessed by his word father we thank you we return the glory to you we bless you jesus we honor you we adore you we give you the glory we give you the glory thank you jesus thank you jesus repeat after me i live by the word my ways are prosperous i have good success one more time like you mean it i live by the word my ways are prosperous i have good success for the last time i live by the word my ways are prosperous i have good success by sunday you are returning with your testimony father we give you glory we give you the glory thank you for fighting my battles for me jehovah Olupeja. Thank you for fighting my battles for me, Jehovah Olubeja. Thank you for fighting my battles for me, Jehovah Olubeja. Thank you for fighting my battles for me, Jehovah Olubeja. Thank you for fighting my battles for me, Jehovah Olubeja. Thank you for fighting my battles for me. Jehovah Olubeja Thank you for fighting my battles for me Jehovah Olubeja Thank you for fighting my battles for me Jehovah Olubeja Thank you for fighting my battles for me Jehovah Olubeja Jehovah Olubeja Jehovah Olubeja the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, 
the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of us now and forevermore. Oh, look, Jehovah, oh, look,